I noticed there is not anything that really explains how to build one. And it became apparent to me when I decided to undertake this again to make these videos that although there are schematics, there are a lot, there's a lot more to building a solid, robust induction heater where you're not blowing your MOSFETs. Like, why do my MOSFETs blow? How come I can't get a lot of power out of my induction heater? I followed the schematics. So that's what these videos that I'm going to post are going to do. They're going to show you the kind of secrets of how to build a scalable, high-powered induction heater, whether it's 500 or 10 kilowatts, and the things that you need to be cognizant about to do so. So let's start with this. I have uh, built um, a small little uh, model over there. And let's just, I just turned it on when this video started. What this first video is going to be about is proper circuit board design. But before I do that, what things do you need if you want to build an induction here? I'm not talking about the induction here, I'm talking about the things you need to go along with it. Well, you're going to need an oscilloscope. All right, you need an oscilloscope. You're going to need a variac or some power source and, and a way to convert to DC. So there is the variac. Here is a simple uh, rectifier that then uh, converts the AC into DC. You're going to need some cooling fans. These are cooling the uh, MOSFETs which are attached to these heat sinks. You're going to probably need a fan uh, to cool your coupling transformer. It wouldn't hurt to have uh, some voltmeters. And in this particular case, I also have a differential um, voltage probes. And this allows you to get a really nice uh, clean signal. So I've increased the scaling and the timing on the uh, oscilloscope. And I want you to notice this here. That's from the switch node, that's switch node ringing. That happens um, from the switching as the MOSFETs go on and off. So we've gone through our Curie point, pulling about almost 15 amps at 140 volts, getting close to two kilowatts of power. You can see that baby is nice and bright and hot. And if you look at the peak, that's almost 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. We're certainly getting close you know, to the melting temperature. And with the next iteration of the circuit board, we'll scale it up to a 240 volt input and we'll be able to easily melt steel. And if you want to levitate aluminum or uh, copper or steel. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you a board trace that I created uh, for this induction heater. And again, the induction heater I'm going to show you uh, can be anywhere from a few hundred watts. It is scalable up to at least 10 kilowatts, if not more. What I showed you previously was close to two kilowatts. Actually, that's 15 times 140, 2.1 kilowatts, uh, but easily scalable. So this board tracing is what you should not do. The components I'm going to go over are going to be identical as I take you through different iterations of uh, the board development but this is a bad design. But first, let's just go over the basic components so you see uh, what you need. Again, you can find the basic schematic on inductionheatertutorial.com and it will show you the schematics, but let's look at the board trace. What we have is a power of 15 volts and our clock input here. 
Um, the clock input is a 50% uh, duty cycle square wave. We'll talk about that in another video. Um, it goes to two chips, a 4421 and the um, mirror 4422. One goes high, one goes low. The output drives a transformer through a uh, one microfarad uh, capacitor, and that drives two coils, two secondaries, that drive the MOSFET, which is here, and another MOSFET here. To keep the gate voltage within range, uh, I have two Zeners back to back to uh, clip off the 15 and minus 15 volts. The actual drive goes through a resistor. I have it labeled 8.8, I'm actually using a 10. And I have diodes here and here as a delay, so the, um, the uh, on and off of the uh, MOSFETs don't overlap, but I have found that you do not need them, so the next iteration is not going to have these delay diodes. So here's the gate on MOSFET 1. Here is the gate on MOSFET 2. And I have a uh, two diodes here for the uh, kickback uh, voltage when the MOSFETs go off. These are um, to take care of the poor body diodes the MOSFETs have. So the, when the uh, current when the voltage and hence the current reverses, these diodes take care of that. You've got two capacitors here and here. Um, these are your uh, uh, H uh, bridge, uh, half H bridge um, uh, decoupling uh, capacitors. The current goes through a current sense transformer, so we can see our current waveform. And then you have your outputs here and here, which will drive a, a impedance matching transformer that goes to the tank circuit. So what's wrong with this circuit trace? What we have are huge traces giving rise to huge induction loops. This one was ringing all over the place and with high ringing, the gates don't function properly, you can't generate the uh, proper current, and eventually the MOSFETs are going to blow as the uh, voltage and current get a little bit higher. You do not want to use this circuit board pattern. What else is wrong with this uh, circuit board? Notice the path of the current. The current is going to go through here, when the MOSFET's on, it's going to go here, then it's going to go down, through here, to your uh, tank. It's then again going to come back here, go out the capacitor to ground. The reverse is going to go through here. It's going to go to the coupling transformer, the tank. It's going to come back through here. It's going to go through here and then out. What we have is a current here and we have current going here. Nothing is canceling out the currents. These currents create a magnetic field which will induce uh, noise in the gates here and here, which will probably cause your MOSFETs to blow. So here we've done a few things. We have a much tighter grouping Wider traces means lower uh, trace inductance. The current is going to go through here and it's going to go in the MOSFET. It's going to come out the MOSFET in the opposite direction and cancel out the inductance of it going in. We have a very tight uh, spacing between the two current paths. Same with this MOSFET, currents coming in, currents coming out. This cancels 
the inductance coming out of the MOSFET. Lower inductance, lower ringing, less chance that you're going to go and blow your MOSFET. Second thing is these resistors are non-inductive resistors. Now you can get away with regular three watt resistors with low inductance like a, uh, a metal film, uh, but I found that the non-inductive 10 ohm resistors are excellent. Also notice I got rid of the delay uh, diode. So very tight tracing here. The input to the gate is far away from the current path on the MOSFETs. And then I'm going to, when I solder, I'm going to lay uh, a trail of solder on here and possibly some uh, copper braiding uh, to handle the current. Because if you're doing 10 kilowatts, you're talking about like 50 amps of current coming in from your mains. And these tiny little tracers are not going to handle 50 amps. So you're going to need to reinforce this, overlay it with copper braiding. What else can we do to make this even better? What I've done now is I've added a, a grounding plane. So this here, this big copper area is a grounding plane, plane connected to the, um, to the ground. The important thing is that it is surrounding the gates. It is isolating the current that's going through here, shielding the gate from the noise generated from the high current being conducted in the tracings. Also, I have shocky diodes here and here. These are in place of the body diodes that come with the MOSFETs. These particular diodes have zero forward and reverse recovery times. They handle each 650 volts in continuous 50 amps uh, RMS current. This will be more than enough to handle even the most robust uh, systems. So I hope this helps in how you design your circuit board uh, when you build your induction heater. Our next video will go into other particulars about uh, building uh, the induction heater, such as capacitor selection um, and uh, cooling of the MOSFETs.